So this is my new editing PC. I put this together mostly for editing, but I also in the future might want to game on it. This is my first time building a PC and I put it together so I can have a better editing experience with Premiere and a better coloring experience with DaVinci. I used to edit and do all the coloring and web surfing on my laptop and it lasted me for a while. It still works great, but I needed a boost since I'm gonna be uploading more videos on YouTube with the production company and you know, our individual YouTube channels. But the experience I have building my first PC was very anxiety driven. It's the thought of putting all the expensive stuff together and having it work properly. I used the Bitwit PC building guide, uh, links in the description. And even though the guy was very thorough and it helped me a lot, there were stuff that were very specific to the build, especially if you're using different parts, different motherboards. And it was very hard to follow the guide because there wasn't a video on YouTube that had the exact same parts that I was using to build my PC. There are manuals that come with the parts, so I just read through them really quick so I wouldn't mess up. And even all this, even with a YouTube video, guide and then the manuals I still managed to mess up but but fortunately it wasn't a big mess up it was just a few tweaks that I discovered when I had to turn on the computer because if you guys will see I had a lot of trouble thinking that the power supply unit was broken and my computer was just not gonna work it, it was like an hour of troubleshooting and then I realized that I actually plugged in the wrong thing in the motherboard that's why it didn't turn on it was very fun to build and it's easier than most people think. You just have to be careful with the very expensive parts and you have to know how to take care of hardware, very sensitive hardware, and also know how to screw in properly. You, you don't want to tighten too much. Uh, you don't want to break anything and also you want to do the crisscross so all the screws kind of fall into place at the same time. So the build took me about eight hours. I had lunch in between. So before before lunch, I had to build the whole PC. And after lunch, it was more of turning it on and yeah, getting it started. So now let's talk about the things that I've had trouble with or I found difficulties with. So first and foremost, the screws on the motherboard are tiny. If you guys haven't built a PC before, uh, putting in a screw on the motherboard and expecting it to go smoothly is not you're not it's not to be expected if you're experienced you would use a very long screwdriver and especially one with the magnetic tip because once you have the fan the CPU fan cooler on sometimes a short screwdriver you can't really squeeze it enough to get the screw in and another one is that I had to buy extra fans for this case because it only, only came with uh, the fans next to the CPU cooler. So that's extra $12 that I had to spend. It wasn't expensive. There were three fans that came with the case. So I wasn't worried about the price. As long as the PC is cool for $12, I think that's great value. And another thing I realized is that some of these uh, manuals are very dense, so it's really hard to keep track and follow. So at some point, I just started to go by eye and what vi the video sold me, but I made a very big mistake on this part. So I accidentally plugged in the um, on button switch on the wrong input on the motherboard. And it's kind of tricky because there are two uh, there's two inputs on the motherboard that are very similar, so plugging it in on the wrong one is, you know, a, a very honest mistake. You can see that here on the motherboard. This is part of the reason why the PC wasn't turning on. It's just the motherboard was just not getting powered. And also, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that once you put in the CPU cooler, you might forget to plug it in because that's what I did. It was... It was discouraging turning on the computer, seeing all the fans move, except the one on the CPU, which is probably the most important fan on this build. But yeah, I mean, the RAM was easy to install. The power source was easy to install. Cable management is something you have to uh, decide personally. 
Another thing that was really tricky was inserting the M.2 hard drives, uh, SSD. Not because I didn't know where they went, it's more because I couldn't find the screw that went on it. I like had to unscrew one of the uh, set screws there, which you didn't need to. But I realized in the end that the case, or I think it was it was the motherboard. Some of the accessories include the M.2 drive um, screws, which are very tiny. And also, guys, if you're dealing with tiny screws. It might be best if you use tweezers if you don't have a magnetic tip because that's what I use. Fortunately, Lucy has a tweezer that I used and even with the tweezers, it's really hard to grasp and sometimes it would just spring load out of the tweezers and get lost in the motherboard. So just be careful doing that. Keep your desk as clean as possible. So if screws do fall, you would see them right away once you lift up the, uh, the case. And another thing that I found to be inconvenient, I mean, I knew this when I bought the whole setup because uh, PC Part Picker, that's how I kind of brought this whole um, build together, told me that this motherboard doesn't support the um, one of the USB connectors that goes to the top of the capes. So I had to buy a adapter. It was pretty expensive for an adapter, it's $24. But I had to get that shipped the next day. This is one of the times where I thought there was another big problem on the PC build. But I just realized that switching monitors was actually helpful because it wasn't reading the Samsung monitor that I had to test it with initially. So I switched to the LG monitor, which I bought recently for the PC build for you know better graphics and better gaming, and it worked. And yeah that was a little scary but at the end it was not something to worry about and also with the msi um, bios it was really really easy to navigate because everything is there on the front page there's some advanced settings that are easy accessible and it's very user friendly and i definitely recommend the msi um, product especially with the motherboard because i got the Wi-Fi one. I'm not sure why I needed the Wi-Fi one. I thought that if I needed to bring the computer somewhere and there was no uh, Ethernet cable, that would be convenient. But who knows? Maybe I could have saved some money there. But right now, I mean, I don't have any regrets about it. I think it's still a great build and yeah, I mean, I'm super proud of it. Although this build took 8 hours, it was definitely worth it, especially when you see something that you build with your hands uh, work properly, especially like a computer. Like, I was super happy, I even, I even celebrated with Lucy, gave her big hugs, she like recorded me. I mean, here's a video of seeing me um, react to turning it off for the first time. The only problem I see is that Sony and their codec is very works very hard on the CPU of the computer. I mean, I've been tracking it with NXZT, the app that tells you, you know, PC monitoring. But other than that, it works very well. I'm not really editing 4K as much. We usually shoot HD because we don't do much 4K stuff unless it's we're, it's meant to be super professional or we're working with a client. I intended to upgrade in the future, so that's why I picked the specs I have now. Of course, you could go cheaper and of course you can downgrade the CPU and the, G and the GPU, but for my purposes, this works best for me so far. Also, I didn't mean for this PC to be RGB, but it just so happened that the CPU came with RGB. So yeah, it's, it's not a bad look. I wouldn't go full RGB, obviously, because it just doesn't look nice to me. But thank you guys for watching. If you guys have the same parts, maybe follow through and not make the same mistakes I have. Definitely, if you're going to build a PC, go to a more advanced channel than mine, like Linus or Bitwit. I use the J2Cent uh, video 
for after the build, reprogramming the computer, turning it on, and then downloading everything. And this just has been my experience. I just wanted to show you guys how nervous I was and how easy it actually is at the end. I'm very happy with it so far. I'm gonna push it even more when I start um, editing with DaVinci, with the GPU. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.